Hello and thank you for joining us on another edition of Your City in Five. I'm your host, Ricky Saias. As the fight against the pandemic continues, the city is making it easier for older adults to get vaccinated first. The public health department says 20% of COVID-19 vaccines received by the city will go to residents who are 75 years of age or older. The oldest seniors who have signed up will be notified first as to when to get vaccinated. Health officials say about 33% of those vaccinated at the city's mega site have been residents 60 years of age or older. Since the start of February, the public health department has vaccinated more than 100,000 people. Meanwhile, the city is focused on improving four key areas of the virus, vaccine distribution, developing a widespread registration process that includes administering the second dose of the vaccine, investing in more technology to improve efficiency, and strengthening how the vaccination process is communicated to the community. City leaders say improvements have already been made, but there are always ways to get better. I'm gonna try to tuck this under, okay? Just so it doesn't fall. While the supply of the vaccine increases, the city is looking at additional locations to provide it. The public health department reminds everyone to get tested for COVID-19 and to be mindful of the virus. It hasn't gone away. Residents need to continue to wear a face covering, watch your distance, avoid large gatherings, and practice good hygiene. Information on COVID-19 is posted on epstrong.org. Face coverings are now a must at all airports in the country. That includes El Paso International. The Transportation Security Administration requires all passengers to wear a face mask for all modes of transportation, including buses, rail stations, taxis, and rideshare services. The federal mandate remains in effect until May 11th. Speaking of airports, a new airline service has landed at the El Paso International Airport. The San Francisco-based Boutique Air is providing nonstop service to Carlsbad and Albuquerque. The eight-passenger plane provides concierge-style service similar to flying a private jet. Boutique Air provides service to small, mid-size and major cities in the country. Two new four-legged officers of the El Paso Police Department are now on the job at the airport. Instead of chasing their tails, these canine officers sniff out crime. The dogs, along with their handlers, Sergeant Raul Melendez and Officer Robert Cano, completed intense training and are now part of the airport canine unit. The canines play an important role in detecting and deterring explosives at the airport. The El Paso Zoo is creating a lot of buzz with a few events just days before it opens to the public on February 10th. Zoo elephant Savannah has picked the Kansas City Chiefs to win this year's Super Bowl. Staff plays two helmet-shaped piñatas in the elephant exhibit. Each represent both teams. And wouldn't you know it, Savannah picked the Chiefs. The zoo says activities like these are great for the elephant. She gets to interact with us and she also likes it because it's extra food. So, you know, elephants love to eat, so that's one of the reasons that she likes to do this so much. This year, the zoo's other elephant, Juno, could not participate because she continues to recover from cancer surgery. Both elephants have been predicting the Super Bowl for more than 10 years. Last year, Juno picked the Chiefs, and wouldn't you know, they won. For many, the month of February means chocolates and flowers, but for others, it could bring back feelings of bitterness towards the next. But as your City in 5 correspondent Sandra Garcia shows us, the El Paso Zoo is trying to combat that with a quit bugging me event that features a cockroach and an X. Exactly. The El Paso Zoo is offering a very specific form of therapy again this year and people think it really does the trick. We all know how it feels to have your heart broken. The whole premise was started with if someone's bothering you, you have an ex-lover, ex-spouse, someone you're not really happy with. The truth is when it comes to those people, it might feel good being a little bit petty. And so the Quit Bugging Me event was born and it's proven to be pretty successful. Last year we had over 20,000 names submitted. We made about $10,000 in donations, which we greatly appreciate. And it was from 97 different countries responded actually. It plays well into some anti-Valentine's Day sentiments, but it's also a fun way to get their animals involved in what might have been just another day for them three years ago. And it does raise some money for us, it raises awareness, uh, but it's just fun to do. And, and bugs are the perfect protein, you know, so they're, they're great to eat and great to consume. It's as simple as submitting a name on the El Paso Zoo website. You can make a donation to the zoo or you can just give us the name of the person. We assign it to a bug and then we feed it out to one of our animals. And out of an abundance of caution, you can look out for that special someone from the comfort of your home with the video streamed directly on the zoo's Facebook page this Valentine's Day. As a special incentive, it won't just be the animals getting an extra treat this year. For every thousand dollars we get, I get to eat one of these. And it's not the first time trying a roach himself either. And zoo director Joe Montesano can describe the experience of eating one perfectly. Um, salty, gooey, crunchy. Like a caramel nougat, but a little bitter flavor. 
The El Paso Zoo has hit its first thousand dollars in donations, so that means zoo director John Montesano is well on his way to eating a lot of those roaches himself. For your City in 5, I'm Sandra Garcia. <laughs> what a way to get back at someone who's bugging you. Thank you, Sandra, for that unique report. Now, if you want to name a roach after your ex, you still have until February 12th to do so. Just visit the El Paso Zoo website. Elsewhere, you have a chance to name the Downtown Children's Museum and Science Center. Just think of a name inspired by the design, then create a video with songs, dances, or drawings, and submit it at epcmuseum.org. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag NameTheMuseumChallenge. The museum is part of the city's 2012 Quality of Life Bond. It's scheduled to open in 2022. And that's going to do it for us on this edition of Your City in 5. But stay up to date with all city happenings by visiting our social media sites. For Jose Solis, who's behind the camera, I'm Ricky Saias. Stay safe, be good to each other, and remember to mask up. We'll see you next time on Your City in 5.